Many of the views, opinions, and themes found in Realm of the Mist Entertainment and Sounds Dicey Gaming podcasts may be unsuitable for people under the age of 17. Listener discretion is advised. You are listening to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast presented by Realm of the Mist Entertainment with your host, John Tolley. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. We are coming to you tonight, as always, from deep within the Outer Rim, far beyond the watchful eyes of the Galactic Empire. My name is John Mark Tolley, and joining me today, as always, is Mr. Joe Cahill. Joe, how are you today? I am, uh, I'm recovering. You're recovering. That is the way. I'm trying to ignore the fact that I'm not going to go to Black Friday because, you know, my extreme dislike of most people. Uh, <laughs> well, unfortunately, my uh, real life job, I have no choice but to be there. So I'm working on thanks. I'm working not only on Black Friday, but Thanksgiving, which is our Black Friday. So that's going to be fun. Mm, um, yeah, I used to work retail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was. Uh, Loss prevention. Oh, so extremely busy day. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. I'm. I'm sorry. Chasing people everywhere with my staff of seven, <laughs> and uh, and then of course money drops and having yeah. to have security escorts and yeah. Yeah, it was always fun. Oh yeah, especially if we had a really good uh, doorbuster. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um. Once once again, though, as you can hear, uh, Ray is not with us. He's taking a little bit of time off, but. He will be joining us next week, and I know we promised that we were going to get the um, more info on the trial of Darth Vader. Uh, I apologize for that. Things have been just kind of topsy-turvy around with the holidays. Um, but we will be getting you definitely more information here soon about that. So... So, um, anyway, uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, there was a third episode, I don't know if you heard this, of The Mandalorian. And I'm hearing good things about it. Um, yeah, have you seen it yet? I, yes, I have. I have, I have seen it, it and it, it definitely it was... It finally leaned me towards the like category versus just being on the fence. Mm -hmm. That was definitely uh, one of the, be one of the, the best episodes so far. Yeah, it it had action, it had drama, it had you know stuff going on. I, I I enjoyed it much more than the first two episodes. Okay, well let's just jump right into it and kind of talk about the episode and <coughs> what we liked and where we'd like to see kind of see the series go um, from from now on. Um, so let's, let's well just, they they, okay. they introduced a huge egg. Mm. For for future shows, and that was the one Mando saying to him, um, "Is it worth exposing the cell?" Mm. Yeah. Uh, what cell? A cell against what? Uh, sounds like a resistance type setup to me. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, they definitely set up that the the man the Mandalorians have been forced into hiding like as a people that, you know, the empire kind of, because of what they did to the system, they were kind of forced into, and they, and they kind of hit more on the Mandalorian, like their history, uh, their history a little bit. Um, with the, uh, the, with the, the steel that they use in their, in their armor and how important it is. And, yeah, how big a religious item it is, almost yeah. to the uh, reverenced. Yeah, um, like even the way, even though you can't see uh, the Mandalorian's eyes, the way he kind of looked at the 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 um, his handler, not or not his handler, but the guy he was getting his jobs from, 
when he had that that steal too. Mm-hmm. That kind of you know, because in their eyes, every bit of that is Mandal is belongs to Mandalore. Right, needs to be recovered and needs returned be, home. Yeah, re- returned home. You know, every single bit of it is Mandalorian property in their eyes. Um, but yeah, it was just an overall, like you said, it was just an overall good episode, and you know, really brought me back again. Not that the other episodes haven't been have been bad in my eyes, but this one definitely was exciting. Yeah. Uh, I I felt John Favreau as mm-hmm. the as the director this time. Uh, oh, that last that last scene with the Mandalorian flying, flying by. I'm like, can you can you say Iron Man? Yep, I and, and, straight out of. And I believe that was John in the costume. Yes, I know it was the yeah. voice. Uh, Paz Vislar was was the name of the character, I believe. Um, yeah, because because they said you know he appeared in it. Okay, well. Armor appeared in it. Yeah, armor, <laughs> yes. Rather um, large armor. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I love all of his stuff so far. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I'm a fan of most of his films. Mm-hmm. Once in a while, he'll get a stinker. Yeah, um, we, everyone does, but... Yeah, everybody does. Uh, sometimes it's just because you know more than yeah. you're supposed to know. Yeah. I mean, but as far as I know, this is his first foray into television. Um, I mean, he might have done stuff early on in his career, but as far as I know, he's been more known for doing the big, big budget features. You know, um, so I'm not sure what the, how different directing for weekly television is compared to. Um, and I know with with a show like this, they do it completely different. They record, they they probably filmed everything way in advance, at one time, and then set it up. I mean, they might have even filmed it like a movie, right? And then you know just broke it up into pieces. But um, but I yeah I think he's doing a I mean so far doing a really good job, and you know. Oh, well, yeah, he's done a few uh, TV series. Oh, okay. More than a few. Mm. I'm, uh, I'm Young Sheldon, executive producer. Okay. Executive producer of The Orville. Oh, okay. Yeah, which makes about sense. Yeah. Uh, about a boy, which I never watched. That wasn't bad. We watched that one. Uh, he, he had a show, Chef. Okay. Uh, let's see... In case of emergency, dinner for five. Hmm. All right. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he has quite a bit of TV experience in, in the on the producer side. Hmm. Um, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, so, um, well, why don't we just talk about like the his job as producer and as someone who is worked as a producer on film what i mean what type of job what type of job does that entail of being executive producer on a either a movie or a show um pretty much even over the director you have final say Mm -hmm. on on a lot of it Uh, a lot of it is getting the money Mm. Uh, you spend a lot of time out looking for financing uh, unless you're you know John Favreau, who just attaches his name and yeah, so suddenly like, the money I'm John Favreau. Sand. Oh, well, here's a billion dollars. Make a movie. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it, the advertising. Yeah. Uh, also, you spend a lot of time as the, the uh, referee mm. between any um, issues you have between actors, directors and actors. Um you know, and you can be involved as much or as little as you like as far as being on set, yeah. uh, that type of thing. Uh, you know, I spend at least 80% of the time when, I, when I'm producing a film on set, uh, and I try not to get in the director's way. Hmm. But every once in a while, there's just something you got to tell them. You know, no, yeah. no, 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 that's not good. Um, yeah. that, that, that's going to get us in trouble. Or we need to make this more exciting. Mm. Uh, it's just pretty much 
you're the film uh, how to put it the film god <laughs> for that episode that movie that whatever you're working on yeah um, hmm. and and usually it's a lot of fun it, it can yeah. be it, it, you can end up with a lot of issues between actors between directors and actors and in those cases you just have to do the best you can do what you mean act you mean you might actually have issues with actors i never thought that you would have that actors would would be have any issues with anybody yeah i do, you don't quote me on this but there are sometimes egos involved egos what yeah, you know it's actors? a shock i know right actors, actors have egos with egos yeah oh and oh you know it's like I, you just ruined I'm the I'm sorry for that me. trailer's not big enough. Tough. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Oh. Uh, or the stuff they want incorporated into a contract sometimes are yeah. they're just ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I've been very lucky with most of the actors I've worked with. Um, they've been really grounded, down to earth yeah. people. And that really <laughs> really helps. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so, I mean, going back to the Mandalorian, um, what are like some specific, like things that you saw that you liked? I liked the other Mandos popping out. Yeah. Um, to, to quote rescue mm -hmm. or, or provide cover fire or however you want to put it. Yeah. Uh, the actions were done well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of what I was looking for. This is a Mandalorian. Um, I like they've gotten away from uh, – they kept the mystique of him. Mm -hmm. uh, Return of the Jedi kind of killed the mystique on Boba Fett because he was kind of a wimp. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, look, a blind dude won. Yes. Kicked your ass. A blind guy with <laughs> yeah. a stick. Yeah, I wasn't really thrilled with that. Yeah. That yeah. choice. I'm sure the actor wasn't either. No. But it just it, the story finally kind of flowed from start uh, yes. to finish. There were no hiccups in the middle. Um, they kind of, kind of jump dropped a lot of the silly scenes. The, yeah, um, I, I did notice that uh, that I was not so fond of in the first two episodes. Mm. Uh, you know, you need to be a drama or you need to be a comedy with this. Yeah, and if you're doing Star Wars and you try for a comedy, you're making a big mistake. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you can you can put in one liners and like little little small step small things in there because that's I mean they've done that through all of the movies of little bits of little jokes here and there, but you don't want it to overpower the movie. Yeah, or to be so bad. Yeah, yeah. But it's like oh, I'm changing channels. This sucked. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I definitely like that. You, we finally seem to have a clear-cut villain going forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we definitely had that, that moment of, aha, he is going to be the, he is going to be the main villain for this. Um, yeah. And good choice. Yeah. Um, it's and, nice to see some of the actors that are, that are back to do this. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's again, it's a, it's the type of villain that I like. It's a villain where, He's not just your mustache twirling, mwahaha, you know, he's, he has a reason for wanting to go after the Mandalorian. Right. You know, he broke the code. Yeah, which I'm thinking that whole cell thing is telling you part of his cover was being a member of uh, the, the guild. guild. Yeah, that, that's pos that is possible. You know, we like again. You know, it's going to be interesting. You know, was it worth breaking cover? Ooh, yeah. I kind and, of like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's going to be interesting going forward just to see. You know, where they take it from here. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, where... that's that's kind of my excitement. Is ooh, what are you going to pull off next? Yeah. Yeah. Where does he? You know, where does he in the galaxy does he go? Um. I like the fact that they kind of kind of gave a gave a little dig to the New Republic. 
they mention the New Republic, but they also kind of make it sound like, yeah, it's not as big and powerful <laughs> and scary as, uh, you know. Yeah, they're not, they're too busy still trying to form a, a government, government yeah, kind of an attitude. Yeah, he's, you know, when he makes the comment, he's like, you can file a claim to the New Republic. He goes, that's a joke. Right. You know. Or, you know, he didn't want, uh, in the earlier episode, Imperial credits, but he was never offered New, New Republic, Republic credit. Yeah, he's never, yeah, New Republic credits. So, you know, you have, you, you know that there's, and they finally kind of, you know, showed, you know, kind of what has happened to the Empire with the fact that it's only warlords and a few stragglers here and there. Right, are keeping, at least in this part of the galaxy, that are keeping the Empire alive. You know, that stormtrooper armor doesn't look quite as shiny and white as it used to. No, and I like that uh, the Warlord references because, you know, shame on me. I'm still hoping for an appearance by Thrawn. Yes, uh, and that was the whole point of when Thrawn comes back. Mm-hmm. He had to get the Warlords back together yes. into an Empire. Yes. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, could we still be hinting that way? He is canon. Come on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Put him in the the the, the cartoon. So <laughs> you could bring him here, and what a cool looking alien he'd be. Oh, that would be that would be very very that would be that would be so cool. But you know, I'm still hoping for him to show up in the Rise of Skywalker and command of the Reserve Fleet for the Emperor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That would just be, even if it's just a cameo mm-hmm. of who the admiral in charge of the fleet is, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yes. And and I had to, I say, you know, and a nice touch to Tim Zahn for where he went in the Legends books to to create oh stuff that actually made it into like the the cartoons, the Clone Wars, yeah, and all of that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, and he's he's one of the few authors that his stuff. A lot of his stuff has made it into the, canon. the new, the, yeah, the new canon, definitely, definitely, and yeah. that's we've said it before. That's just a testament to his writing and that character. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's that, a great character. Oh, There's, yeah. I mean, I, I would, I wouldn't mind serving under Thrawn. <laughs> oh, and I highly recommend the new book. Good, uh, mm-hmm. Thrawn Treason. I got it. I read it in under eight hours. Wow. Uh, could not put it down, um, and that you know that's, that's setting it down for a few minutes, going and doing things, coming back, opening the book, reading another hundred pages. Uh, uh, wow! You know, I, I'm not going to give you any spoilers, but this is early Thrawn, okay, early Empire for him. Mm. So they you get we get Thrawn back as he was written. In, mm. in the original three books, nice. Uh, which, yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, you get his introduction to like Captain Pillion. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. Yes, Captain Pillion. Now, have Who they changed? Just... Now, I haven't read a lot of the new canon. Have they changed the backstory of the Nagre? Not even mentioned. Really? Yeah. Oh, not See, even was... mentioned. Because the, the Empire's still around, so he doesn't have that bodyguard yet. Well, he had he in in um, in Rebels. Rook makes an appearance. Oh, see, yeah, he so has. I haven't watched the Rebels, but he has Rook with him. Rook is his Rook is his bodyguard. Uh, but they don't mention the species name; they just mention his name of Rook. So he probably um, in the timeline has not been sent by the Emperor yet to subjugate the, no, the Nagri homeworld. No. Right. To, and to blame it on the rebellion, right? And well, it was Vader the... that was sent, because that's why they had well, yeah, the loyalty. Out... That's why yeah. they had the loyalty to Leia, right? Lady Vader he killed a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, he sent the five hundred first, and they were basically kicked their butts with nothing but sticks and stones. And so Vader says, "Hmm, I could use these guys." Yeah, I think they need some training and some weapons, and they'll be really awesome. Yeah, and we, we could, you know, just blame this on somebody else and say that we're going to fix their planet, but never do. 
Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's poisoned. Uh, tough. <laughs> uh, we're sorry. <laughs> but here's some nice shiny things. Yeah. Oh, you like shinies, right? <laughs> oh, and here's some blankets. You ignore the lice. Yeah. <laughs> But we have medicine for that, so it's cool. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, touching on another sort you know, touchy uh, subject. Uh, a little bit. We like to do that. Yeah. All right. So in other news. Okay, other news. Uh, other news in the Star Wars world. Uh, in Kenobi, we have now learned that we will get six one-hour episodes for season one. Hmm. Uh, no confirmation on a season two, but that's mostly, I think, because Ewan McGregor is a busy, busy man. Yeah. And they're going to want to see how it does. Mm, that, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, that's definitely kind of, uh, um, yeah, I, I really think they were jumping, they, they took a gamble with the, the multi-season contracts with, uh, Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, but so far it seems like it's it's working out good with that. Um, the six episodes definitely seems like a very short season. But again, like you said, they're probably just kind of testing the waters. Yeah, and they seem to be keeping to that six to eight episode uh, format. Thing, yeah, format. I'm really looking because they have you know. A, a bunch of seasons coming out in the Marvel universe um, that are going to be, I think, a good shot if they do them right and they got the same actors. Yeah. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, that should be pretty awesome. Oh, yes, uh, definitely. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm not so sure, you know, about doing the whole, you know, Benefer thing and, and having the WandaVision. Oh, Wanda, Wanda yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of... Oh, okay, make the show really, really good so that I can overlook that name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, oh, and then of course, you know, we know Kathleen Kennedy's contract expires next year. Oh, uh, yeah, I, that's okay. okay well. So, we have no idea. I mean, they announced that they're going to do another movie um, that will not be part of the uh, the Brothers trilogy. Hmm. And it will be the first one released before the, the trilogy starts. Mm. Uh, but she's being very tight-fisted with what it is, if there's anybody you know that we know in it. Uh, and then, I, you know, what's going to happen to Star Wars? They're going to re-sign her, give her a new contract. Will Disney put her back in charge of Lucasfilm? Or will we see something different? Um, that's... I would love to see a protege. <laughs> a certain protege who's gotten more involved yeah, recently. Yes. Fol take over Lucasfilm. Yes. Uh, I know a lot of people have been saying Favreau, but I think Favreau is better as a on the ground, like what he's doing now, directing, producing. Um, right. I mean, sign like him to a multi deal. Yeah. Keep him around, but yeah, don't put him in charge of one of the studios. I yeah. don't think that would be the way to go. And if you do go that direction, make it Marvel. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. he's great in everything, but his strength was there. Uh, yeah. He went from being an indie producer to on demand. Everybody wants him. Yeah. I, I definitely think, though, that with Star Wars, you definitely need you need that one person who can lay out the storyline from where they want to go, the end of the Skywalker saga on, you know, kind of like how Marvel had their, had their phase four, you know, what's going to be phase two or phase whatever for star Wars going forward. Right. And, you know? and consider doing it that way. They've got to get some kind of long-term plan out there. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, and they, I think they need someone in charge of that. That can be like, that knows the star Wars universe that knows the characters, that knows George's George's vision. Right. And maybe give up on the whole trilogy thing and mm. make it a greater universe. Mm -hmm. Like Marvel. Yeah. Um, 
everything ties together to, you know, 10, 11, 12 movies, and then you have a finale and you start your next phase. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That seems to be the formula where film's going. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I know I'm working on the first of a trilogy now myself, and I'm seriously looking at maybe doing it, expanding that universe, hmm. uh, and adding in three or four other films. Okay. I've had some people that have thrown some ideas at me that I'm like, ooh, I kind of like that. Okay. Um, and then just put it in that universe, tie it together with the cadets, the, you know, with Last Battleship. Yeah. Uh, and maybe even bring in a character or two. Oh, okay. Even if it's just, you know, intermittent communications with the ship out there fighting the war. Yeah. Uh, mm. And that's, I, th- I would love to see Star Wars go in that kind of a direction. You know, put out a list. Boom. Here's the next five years, ten years. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's here's the other question. Where do you want them to go as far as the timeline? Do you want them to... Because you have a myriad of places and times you can you can set it. I mean, with the whole galaxy... You know, you can you can even set it during the original timeline, but have a whole set of movies set somewhere completely else on the other side of the galaxy. Right, and I I think they missed it with uh, not doing a um, bit more information between uh, the end of Jedi, you know, Jedi, mm-hmm. Return of the Jedi, and then uh, Force Awakens. Yeah, I think that was a big, big open area of what happens with the Empire, what happens, because, yeah, okay, the Emperor's dead, they lost a few ships, but the Empire was huge. Yeah. Uh, does does the whole thing balkanize? Do they have somebody like Admiral Paleon trying to keep at least a portion of it as the Empire? Mm. Um you know, Yeah, I mean... Does, what's I mean, the New Republic struggles building it up? Yeah, and I mean, I know they had books that kind of help tie everything in but not everyone reads books not everyone and even i mean it's stuff like that even just a line or two in force awakens to kind of catch people up right instead of just a a star destroyer sitting in the desert yeah to let you know just a you know oh you know a mention of you know and there was a mention of the new republic but right Right before it got destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, just to, you know, for Leia to mention something about, oh, the Senate wasn't, wouldn't listen to me. Or. Which seemed rather petulant because it looks like she just ran away and formed her own resistance group. Yeah. Um, you know, of, you know, they, or, you know, or, or, you know, saying something of, you know, the New Republic doesn't see the, the First Order as a threat. You know, something, yeah. you know, something like that. Anything, you know. how, how did the remnants of the Empire become the First Order? Yeah. Uh, and change their name and everything. Yeah, and I mean, and even even a mention of, because it, we know in the book, if in the books, that the First Order is not the Empire. Right. There were a remnant. There were a group that broke off when the empire, after the empire surrendered, at the Battle of Jakku, and went off into the unknown regions. So you know there was never a mention of what what does the remnant think of the First Order. You know. You know stuff like that. Of you know you even again you could have you know a line of of one of the First Order generals or someone saying something about the Empire are just cowards hiding, you know, hiding hiding in their, their, their little corner of the galaxy, afraid to confront the New Republic. Right. You know, they become cowards. They become the very thing they fought against. Yeah. Did but, mean anything... Yeah, I mean, uh, it was, we went from Return of the Jedi, okay, what's going to happen now, to The Force Awakens, and that, with a lot of time, that's just dead to us. Yeah, yeah, and, 
And I know that, I mean, I know a lot of people were hoping, you know, have been hoping for years to get the Thrawn trilogy. And I realized that after, or either the Thrawn trilogy or I have a friend who was hoping upon hope that we're going to get New Jedi Order. Ew, no. That we were going to get Cadus <laughs> and we were going to get Jaina and... The Sword of the Jedi and all that stuff. Yeah, all all that all that stuff, you know, with you know, Jason turning to the dark side and and I think we kind of got that. You know, you can definitely look at Kylo as kind of that stand in for Cadus. And yeah. Well, I mean, in in the books, you know, we did have a Ben, the younger yeah, brother. Yeah. And, you know, with Ray kind of being a stand in for Jaina, but um yep. You know, but at the same time, very, very different. And, you know, personally... Where do you think they're going to go with Ray? Who is she? I don't know. I, I, keep I got going some back. silence out of him. I like that, yeah. folks. Part of me hopes that they actually keep it that she is no a nobody. Okay. I kind of... I, I know they probably won't. But I think that shows that. Nate, you don't think she's going to find out she was a virgin birth, that her dad wasn't really her dad, and the midichlorians made her. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> oh, there's certain. Well, things... if that doesn't get us some hate mail, I don't know what will. Oh uh, no, no. The one, the one I'm hoping, and this is one thing, a rumor that, I, a film theory that I heard is that what they're going to do is that they're going to introduce time travel. She's going to go back in time to... The the Emperor's going to come back from before the prequels, pull her back through time. She's going to cut herself off from the Force, call herself Shmi, and have Anakin Skywalker. No! I know, I know. I heard the the same thing is that Rey is going to... Ray is going to be cut my hand off and throw me off of this thing now. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm that like, was old. Oh. Whoa, that's about the theory I've heard. Yes, I I heard a couple of people put that out. I'm like, oh no, no, I do not want to see that. If 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 they bring time travel back in, which is a distinct possibility, they've already established that time travel does exist in the Star Wars universe through Rebels in the world between worlds. But I think there are definitely better ways to implement it or even to use it as a plot device yeah. than than to do something like that. You know, Keep you can f- use it f- as a way that the emperor wants to, wants to use it so he can go back and change the mistakes that he made and that it's up to the resistance and maybe even the first order or the remnants of the first order to try and stop him from doing that to destroy this this por- this portal or whatever before he can use it to you know basically take control again you know you don't actually have to yeah. go back in time but you can have it there that okay this is something that exists and then the emperor and then they have to but as far as who ray going back to who ray is I think if they do anything, they're probably going to do go with the clone. But who she's a clone of is a completely different story. Um, she's a clone. I think she's going to be a female clone of Luke. I think so. Uh, I've also heard of the possibility that she is a clone of Palpatine. Uh, I've heard that floated around. I've heard... Of course, when the first movie came out, there's a lot of speculation that she might be a Kenobi. Yeah, um, uh, I heard that. Um, I, you know, I think if she's a clone, she'll probably be Luke's, and they yeah. were trying to have her raised with a lot of the same harshness that Luke did mm-hmm. growing up on a desert planet and such, mm-hmm. so they could get a Jedi Master out of her. Yeah, but um, that's the question is who who cloned her? Right. I mean, what and why? If she was was a clone, why was she cloned? Um, 
But at the same time, going back to what I was saying about her being a quote unquote nobody, that would just go to, you know, that would, you know, solidify that you don't have to have a name to be special. You don't have to come from a family or to, you know, have this, you know, this long heritage to be anyone important, to be someone right. important in in the galaxy. Um, but as far as her, I think you're going to see her remain on the light side. I, I think this whole thing of, you know, the Darth Ray thing is, because that's not what Star Wars is about. You know, Star Wars has always been good versus evil, black versus white. Right. And it's also been about redemption. Um, and that no one is past saving. I think that's one thing the original trilogy taught us was that no one is beyond saving. You know, with, with you know, with, with Vader's story. That, right. You know, Vader was, did the most despicable things in the world, but he was not beyond saving and you know, it just took the love of a son to bring that around. So I think there's a distinct possibility that you see the redemption of Kylo and the return of Ben. I mean, what what do you think? Do you? What, I mean, I think that's what our, where our end event's going to be. He, yeah. come, he goes back to being Ben Solo. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I don't like the Shmi thing. No, uh, no, no, no. That that's that just, just kind that's of just scary. That made me throw up a little <laughs> in my mouth even talking about it. Because I mean, now there's the new. Uh, I've I've seen the theory where, um, they think that Shmi, uh, kind of lied about who Daddy was anyway. Mm. And there's been two theories out there: either uh, Plagius. Or yeah. Palpatine's child. Mm -hmm. I've heard Palpatine. Um, I've heard both. Um, I kind of lean more towards it being Palpatine. Yeah, especially the way he treated Anakin. Yes, like he yeah, knew. he's turning him to be an apprentice, and everything else, but almost well, definitely in a father type way. Yeah, a very creepy, evil father, but still a father. Yeah. <laughs> Let's save your girlfriend. Oh, wait. I oh. We have to figure it out ourselves because he didn't really teach me. Um, I know I implied that, but... Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but now that you're a Darth, it's okay. Yes. We're going to strap you in this armor so you can walk around. Because <laughs> you got cooked a little too much. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, oh, I'm not creepy at all. No. We're going to have you make babies, though. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he he knew about them. Yeah. But thought they were dead. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, we're getting creepy now. Okay. Uh, so how about you guys out in the audience? Mm. Why don't you email us some of your fan theories that you've seen or heard or come up with on your own? Mm -hmm. And we will... Uh, we can look into that for you. Definitely. Definitely. And, definitely. And, and, you know, you may find your theory making it onto the show. Ooh. 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 And so where would they, they send those to us? All righty then. That was a nice little segue in there. You can email us at realm of the mist entertainment at gmail.com. Just remember to, uh, in the subject, put in War of the Stars, and uh, you can email us those or any other questions that you might want to, that you might have for the show. You can find us also now on our own Facebook page, that is War of the Stars, and on Twitter at War of the Stars 1. Also on Twitter, you can find us, of course, on our main Twitter page at Realm of the Mist Entertainment, and on Facebook also at Realm of the Mist Entertainment. You can also find all of the shows at Realm of the Mist on Anchor.fm. Anchor.fm is, of course, your one-stop shop for all your podcasting needs, including, if you are a podcaster yourself, the ability to record and edit your own podcast. Um, 
So yeah, check us out. New Realm of the Mist. That's what got to remember to put in that new. It's the new Realm of the Mist on Anchor.fm. Find us there. Uh, as for me, you can find me on Twitter at John Mark Tolly one because I'm, of course, the number one John Mark Tolly on Twitter and on Instagram at John Tolly 3930 uh, Facebook at Mark Tolly. And that's about it for right now. Uh, Joe, where can they find you? Uh, you guys can find me at uh, Facebook, Joe Cahill, Director Producer. Or under my company name, Steamhouse Entertainment. Uh, that Steamhouse Entertainment will also work for you on Twitter and Instagram and most others, YouTube. Um, you can email me at uh, Steamhouse Entertainment, all one word, only one E, in uh, between house and entertainment at gmail.com. And I would love to hear from you. And, you know, you can check out all my uh, film projects that are going on right now. They all have their own Facebook pages. Cool. Alrighty then. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Uh, and for everyone here, uh, all of our American listeners want to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. And um, I, for one, am thankful that we're getting new Star Wars. Absolutely. And happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Please make sure you uh, participate in the uh, genocide of a bird. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I couldn't resist. So it's okay. It's all right. Uh, well, until next time, uh, remember, this isn't just my Star Wars. This isn't just your Star Wars. This is our Star Wars. May the Force be with you. And we are... Uh... From celebrity interviews to Star Wars, to things that shouldn't be said but had to be said, to conspiracy theories, or maybe just a night of playing Dungeons and Dragons, whatever the podcast you're looking for could be found here at Realm of the Mist Entertainment. Make sure you check out all of our shows because there's something for everybody there.